Hey everybody. Hello everybody. Hey everybody. It's Brock. This is Brock. And we got a new episode with another episode of All About. Of All About. All About. What's up everybody? It's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About. And today we are learning about a very cool coral. One that's easy to take care of and one I recommend a lot of people get because they get huge and everybody loves to see corals that are big. This is the Toadstool Leather. Prices on them, you'll normally spend about $30 for a decent size one. And then if you're wanting to get some of the cooler colors like the neon greens, you normally spend about $70 to $100 for them. Hair level, they're super easy. Most leather corals are. They grow really fast. They grow in pretty much any conditions of tanks. Temperature, you want to keep it 72 to 78. DKH, 8 to 12. pH, 8.1 to 8.4. And your salinity, 1.023 to 1.024. Colors on them, most of the time you have like this brownish tan color. Some of them you can get are also a more of a yellow color. And then the tips that'll come out are most of the time white, but the green ones are the ones everybody really likes. Those are the ones you want to get. Diet, so they are filter feeders through photosynthesis, so they definitely need some current running through them so they can eat plenty. I've noticed also that it, whenever I fed oyster feast, they tended to grow very fast. So that's another thing to try. Just any kind of food you can find that is really good for filter feeders, they'll love it. Origin, most of the time they're aquacultured, but they can also come from the Australia, Indonesia area. Venomous, so to us, they will not hurt us, but they can create a toxin on top of them that will greatly affect nearby corals to, to the extent of killing them. It's pretty bad, so you definitely want to put them in a spot that he can spread out and won't be trying to, you know, put this toxin all over your corals surrounding them. Probably the only coral, which it isn't even really a coral, it's an invert, that I've seen survive it is an anemone. I used to have anemones right beside my mine that was huge, and he wouldn't ever mess with those. But anything else, like SPS corals, zoas, they stay closed up all the time because they're just eating up that toxin that he produces. So put them in a spot they can spread out. Placement, really anywhere. I recommend the top because they like a good high lighting to make them come out and look really good. And it's also good to put them up top so they can have plenty of room to spread out. Current, I would recommend about medium most of the time, maybe high, just depending on how well yours likes current. But you definitely want at least a medium flow because they need plenty of flow to eat up and filter feed. Tank size doesn't really matter. Just make sure all your levels are right. Make sure your KH and your calcium staying up. Make sure you got plenty of nutrients in there for him to eat. So clownfish, just quick fact, clownfish can host these guys, so don't freak out if your clownfish starts swimming up in one of these. They will also shrink up completely about once a month, maybe every other month. And basically all the little tentacles that come out on top of them soak up and then they kind of get a little bit smaller. That's just what we call shedding. They do that every once in a while and then whenever they come back out, they're like double the size. It's awesome. So if you see that, don't freak out. Just give him time to come back out, and he'll be fine. It takes him probably about two to three days to come back out. When fragging them, it's very, very important to be careful whenever you frag these guys. If you can, take them out of your tank because fragging them makes them release that toxin, and that's the last thing you want just floating everywhere in your tank. So take them out, put them in a separate bucket, and basically what you can do is the big mushroom head that comes over you can cut the edges off of that and glue them to a little frag rock and he'll end up growing his own foot over time and then he'll bloom out just as big as yours. Uh, what else we got? I think that pretty much hits on everything you need to know about them. Just make sure you put them somewhere that they can take up a lot of room. And one thing you got to know is once they get big enough, they're going to be putting a major shadow on everything below them because they're just like a big mushroom. So make sure you don't have any guys down there that you're wanting to grow well. Just put them in a good spot. Don't let that toxin get all over your other corals. You should be fine taking care of this guy. He grows good, grows big. And I hope y'all all enjoyed this video. I'll see y'all later. Today's my birthday. I'm about to go celebrate being 22. Y'all make sure to like and subscribe. Tell your friends and we'll have another video coming out tomorrow. If you got any more questions, please leave them down below. I'll get them back to you. Lighting requirements, anything like that, just shoot them down. I'll see y'all later.